uh, joining us to understand why this is, is golf, and for the golf industry is Tom Stickney. The, he's the director of golf instruction at Promontory Golf Club and joins us live from Park City, Utah. Welcome to Biz Asia America, sir. And I guess the first question I have for you is that a lot of people, when you bring up the word golf, they think that only rich people play golf. And I, I, I guess, let me start with the premise of, is that fair in your mind? You know, it's um, it yeah, it certainly did. It used to be a very uh, very restricted sport uh, because it was financially very expensive. Uh, over the time, with the economy has gone down a little bit, uh, they've had to close some of the higher end golf courses and make them more applicable to the public. And because of that, they've they've lowered the prices. So while there's still the the part of the business that is very very expensive, there is another subsect that is uh, a little bit more uh, applicable for the the lower income type of person. Now, I mean, I firsthand got knowledge of this when I was in uh, living in Asia, and of course, there's now a thousand different golf courses in China. I mean, people absolutely love it. I mean, it doesn't matter the age group. You go out there, it's partly because you love the sport. It's partly because you need to do business deals. Uh, how big of a growth generator is China? China is going to be huge. I mean, obviously, you have the population there. Uh, you have the affluency there. And they're hungry. They're hungry for something neat, new, and different. And like America many, many years ago, we started expanding, and golf became a gigantic way to do business, uh, to sell real estate, and to do a lot of wonderful things uh, and, and be a great family sport. And I think you're going to see with China, um, they have the same thing coming. It's going to be absolutely huge in China, no the, question. The, now in fairness, there has been criticism as well because these golf courses take up a lot of time. Usually they take out either a farmland or an area of the city and someone has to get displaced often. Yeah, how, how, do you, how do you handle that? You know, I think it's like anything else. I mean, you're going to see some attrition and there's going to be times when people are going to be displaced. They're going to move people around. Uh, but the bottom line is they're usually going to take areas that are less than desirable and make them more desirable and they're going to make it better for everybody i think when there's more money coming into the into the city or into the country uh everybody's going to prosper so uh, here's the flip side of it as we talked about earlier golf is declining in america what's going on why is it the economy is it just interest level in the game w what is it you know, it's a great question, and a lot of people have tried to figure that out. I think at bottom line, it boils down to money. You know, we didn't have a lot of disposable income over the last couple of years. I, it boils down to time. Um, you know, when I was a kid, you know, the fathers were were definitely uh, they disappeared to the golf course uh, for all weekend long, and the mother was left to take care of the children. Now, uh, husbands and wives are sharing the kids' responsibilities, and there are more things drawing into the kids, soccer and piano and baseball and basketball, so on and so forth. So I think that's where you've seen a little downturn is that the family unit has been less like it was in the 50s and more uh, a, a cohesive unit with mom and dad equally sharing the burden. All right, well, you, you definitely don't look old enough to, to know about <laughs> the 50s. Um, the, but the economics of golf are pretty good, right? Callaway, all these different big name brands, they're all doing just fine. So, so is there a disconnect there between the number of people playing versus how the companies are doing in terms of profitability? Well, I think what happens, like anything else, you know, because there's less disposable income, you know, people aren't buying the new hot new driver every single year like they were doing before. Um, so now companies are having to scramble. There's less people buying clubs. You know, I'm on the lesson tee all day long, and I see people with clubs that are, you know, four or five years old, drivers that are three, four, five years old, and that still work pretty, pretty well. So I think the companies are having to reinvent ways to make sure that they um, market to the consumers that you need the new driver, you need these new irons, and this is why. So I think that's kind of the twofold process. Very quickly, what is the, the tour doing? What are people like you doing who are instructing people? How are you getting people excited? whether it's in America or China, about the sport? You know, I think the best thing comes from uh, Mark King at TaylorMade Golf, uh, who's now the new president of the Adidas Group. Uh, he created a thing called Hack Golf. And what it is is with 15-inch cups, uh, radios, iPods, have some fun, making it a fun endeavor. It's not uptight. It's not, you know, where you have to shh, be quiet. It's fun. And that's what we've missed in the game. We've, we get too many rules and too many things. We've got to start thinking out of the box and really make golf fun. And having 15-inch uh, holes like Mark and many other ideas is really going to start taking it to the kids and making them have a lot more fun. 